I'm joined with Taylor Grossberg and Chris Villiers uh, from the Silver Kingdom, which has been nominated as a finalist in our music category at Bunting for Shorts 2021. How are you both, Taylor and Chris? Oh, we're fantastic. Very happy to be here. And Chris, good? Oh, yes, doing well. Also quite happy to be one of the finalists. So we feel quite privileged. Oh, I'm, gl I'm glad to hear. Um, it's one of those films that we've really enjoyed. We've really enjoyed the song, especially. And um, I was reading before uh, this, and we were just discussing before we uh, hit record, that the Silver Kingdom started off as a book series. Is that right, Taylor? That is correct. I actually wrote the books two years ago and only recently got them published. Oh, wow. Um, what was it like to sort of on your journey then from writing the books to get it published? Is that, I suppose that's quite a challenge. It was quite a challenge. Yes, I sent it out to quite a few publishers. And I think as many aspiring authors know, it's not that easy to get one. So I got really lucky with Aonius Books there in California. Um, they read the books and they were like, well, we see the potential. We'd love to publish it. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And Thank when you. you were writing the books then, Obviously, it's about, well, I'll, I'll let you introduce what it's about. But when you were writing it, did you always feel that there was a, a need for sort of a, a more visual component to it? And then obviously spiralled into the music video that it now is. Absolutely. See, I love movies. And when I write, I can kind of picture the movie scene. And I didn't even almost have a budget or a crew or anything to make the um, books into a movie. So I was thinking, well, a music video or a trailer could be just as cool. Yeah. Um, so for those that don't know then, just before we jump in a little bit further, would you like to tell us a little bit about what The Silver Kingdom is about? Absolutely. Um, the Silver Kingdom is a young adult fantasy series. Um, there are two books at the moment. It is the first one, Cry of the Shifters, and the second one, Secret of the Castle. Now, it's always tricky to tell someone about a book because obviously I don't want to give any spoilers. So I'm just going to like try and give a little bit of an idea. It starts off by with a girl, Caitlin Wilde, who wakes up in the small town and she has absolutely no idea who she is or where she is or what has happened to her. And then after a while, she figures out, you know, she lives in the Silver Kingdom and it is a kingdom where magic is banned. Um, and throughout the whole story, she's trying to figure out what happened to her that she cannot remember anything. And uh, if you look at the music video, uh, of course, play Caitlin. And uh, then the blonde guy is under. He plays Dylan, who is also one of the main characters in the book and becomes Caitlin's friend. And uh, the guy with the brown hair is Franku. He was playing Ralph, who is a shifter. On the um, cover of the book, you'll see a wolf. That one is Ralph. Oh, wow. So... Then, Chris, when you were uh, originally asked about the Silver Kingdom, um, how was it to sort of go from the electronics videos that I know you make on YouTube to something very different in terms of production and then obviously uh, the directions from Taylor herself? So this was a bit of a different project that I normally tackle because in YouTube videos about how to fix electronics, well, that's my background. But I also used to do, uh, I used to shoot all Pierre's music videos, the Pierre who produced the song for us. Um, but I never had full creative freedom like Tyler gave me. So it, it was very nice in that sense, because it, it, we had a lot of opportunity to test different things. Did it work? Does this work? Does this not work? Um, I can, if I say, I want to see what this scene looks like if we just do it in silhouettes or if we bring in some colored lights from the one angle or something like that. Then Tyler was very happy to sit there for in sometimes days, just <laughs> testing different shots, seeing what works, going through the footage again, seeing, okay, this doesn't really work or this, this is amazing, but it doesn't really fit into the storyline that we were, that we were, uh, we were um, aspiring to or following. And at the end of the day, that really does make the process a lot easier if you get just a, if you get just a blank canvas and say, "Go wild." So that was really amazing. So it was definitely a bit difficult to do the special effects on a budget, um, and it's a lot of times it's also quite difficult to do something like that so that it doesn't look cheesy. So we spent a lot of time trying to make. Some of the effects, even though they were lo very low budget, we, we spent a lot of time trying to perfect them to a point where it doesn't look like 
you know, some cheap t TV show, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I think you've, um, having watched this quite a few times now, it is really effective. I really like the scene sort of semi towards the end where you see the blood inside the guy, but as like a, a sort of a steamy kind of lift through him. It's really effective. And there's lots of different uh, imagery like that, which clearly relates well to the story as well. Um, and with the song as well being incredibly catchy, I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that really helps. So given that the fact that it was a, a, a blank canvas, um, was there anything that was particularly difficult with the filming or because you had that freedom, was it, was it plain sailing as such? Um, it, it was easy and difficult at the same time because at the one hand, let's say we wanted to do a scene with the horses um, and you know, you, you only have X amount you know, you, you only have access to X amount of resources. So you, ca you cannot have, say, an army of horses in a, in a line with people on top of it, which was sort of uh, linked to the, the Narnia idea that we were also going for. Um, so we had to get very creative in what we could do with our available resources. So um, it was nice. And then we also got a bunch of inspiration from other uh, videos that got released in the mid 2000s um, to get an idea of okay this is what they did only with light so let's see if we can do something similar with our theme so that that was the easiest because you can do a lot of light that we don't need a lot of props you don't need a lot of staging or anything you can just do everything in front of the black canvas which is what we ended up doing mm. because then you needed maybe a sword in one hand and clothing, and that's all the props you need for the shot. And in, in post, you would add a bit of lighting or a bit of, um, uh, you would create a composition afterwards. So that made it easy and difficult at the same time, uh, as, especially, uh, so the, the video was rendered in 4K, but my P unfortunately, we don't have the fanciest gear. So when you try to do all those special effects and the, your computer is like chugging along and you're getting like one, one image every 10 seconds, you're like, okay, this is a, this is a bit challenging. And Tyler yeah. and I are just sitting there waiting for this thing to render. So you can go like, yeah, this works or this doesn't. So it, it was fun though. Yeah, I think that's the joy of having, even if you've got like an old computer or something trying to do it, it's just like, come on, come on. I want to see what's happened. I want to see what's happened. Um, amazing. Oh, so for Taylor then, if um, Chris mentioned obviously different uh, fantasy films and things that came out, um, were there any that sort of inspired the, the book as well as your thoughts when obviously talking to Chris about how to make the music video? Well, in general, I think all fantasy films, you know, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Narnia, all of that fan. And like, I always watch stuff like this and I was like, well, I really want to make people feel the way these movies make me feel. Um, you know, all the books, because, you know, I read a lot of books too, obviously all the Harry Potters, um, Sarah J. Moss, whatever. Um, it's one of my big passions. So, and then, yeah, with the Narnia thing, I think that quite inspired it a lot because in one of the shots, um, the horse, he wears a chamfron. And it was actually used as a prop in Narnia. And uh, my mom somehow got it, and we were like, well, you know, we just got to shoot this with a horse. <laughs> you can't say no when you've got props from Hollywood. <laughs> or not Hollywood, not. probably. But <laughs> so, oh, amazing. That's really interesting. So I think that's one of the things that's interesting to see when you have to talk about films is the, is the little hidden details. Um, so was there any, like inspirations in terms of the direction Chris for like different directors um, I know we've obviously mentioned the Narnia films and things but in terms of the shot styles or uh, the fact of using the projections and using the um, the use of light was there anything in particular that sparked that as an inspiration so there was this one music video from Taylor Swift I can't remember the name of the thing but they used they used a bunch of a combination of projections in that video and when I saw it, just the effects that it creates, uh, you, you know, it's a, it's a shot of a person with a projection on top of it. And it, that creates an emotion immediately. So when, when I saw that, I thought like, yeah, we can, we can definitely do this. Um, we can definitely use 
this technique to our advantage to create the message that we're trying to send. Um, so it was that, and there was there was another form. I just sorry, I'm just can't remember the name at the moment. There was another form that was a lot of inspiration, but also like Tyler said, the Narnia forms. We were also trying to go for that medieval um, Celtic type of vibe. Mm. Uh, if we if we could achieve that, um, unfortunately, things like Game of Thrones and Vikings, it, it, we try to stay with that type of. Um, medieval fighting spirit theme, but um, yeah, we like I said, we were we were quite limited in in terms of some of the props because uh, none of those productions you can find anywhere in South Africa. So getting props that look decent is slightly challenging. Yeah, I mean, considering it was it was a near zero budget production, am I right? That it was um, yeah. it's, the, the effect that you've managed to create is incredibly impressive. Um, so then thinking a little bit about the future, I suppose, with the book series obviously doing quite well, uh, we're two books in now, is there plans for future accompanying music videos, short films? Um, Taylor? At the moment, they aren't, but I've just finished book three and uh, sent it in, so it's going to be edited and everything, and we aim to have it published at the end of the year. Um, so then I'll probably start thinking about another music video if everyone is keen for it. It was so much fun the first time, um, and I always enjoy writing lyrics. Oh, so you wrote the song as well? Uh, I wrote the lyrics. I don't have any music skills, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I, I was like, listen, I was thinking, you know, all of the cool movies have some sort of a song, like The Hunger Games have that Mockingjay song, um, and it's just stunning. So I was like, well, I would really like one for my book too. So I wrote the lyrics and then I just completely was stuck because I can't play any instruments, I can't sing. Um, and then Pierre, our interested friend, introduced me to Pierre and I sent him the song and I told him about the book and I was like, listen, I want kind of a medieval vibe, you know, um, can you do something with it? Um, and I listened to a few of his original songs and I was just like, wow, this guy's absolutely brilliant with music. And then he started working on our song and he sent it back. And it was just perfect the first try. Like, there was nothing I wanted to change. I told him, like, you've got the rhythm, the voice, everything just works perfectly. I, 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 I really get yeah. on, on top of that. Um, so I don't know if you know South Africa's geography, but this was all, also part of during the lockdown where Pierre was in a different part of the country. So we managed to do all of the music production remotely, which was amazing. Wow. So we, we, we did do a few vocal takes here in Pretoria, but those didn't make the final cut. But we were able to do a completely, uh, you know, work from home, how can I say, production from here. It was quite amazing. Like, uh, even though I've worked with Pia on some of his videos in person, this entire thing was done remotely. So it just shows you what can be accomplished if you just think differently. I think that's really good. How your, considering... how your workflow should work. Yeah. I think with considering obviously the pandemic has meant for a lot of filmmakers, they've not been able to do anything or have really struggled maybe just having to go out on their own for a change. The fact that you guys have managed to even cross country uh, chat and organize different parts of the film and still get out and shoot is seriously impressive in the time like this. Um, awesome. So let's sort of think about where people can find the book series, where people can find the video, and any of your other work, Chris, as well. Maybe Taylor, you want to talk about where the book comes from? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, well, both books are available on Amazon.com, so it's really easy. You can get them in Kindle or paperback. Um, I'll definitely long-term look into getting it into the bookstores. That would be incredibly cool. But right now, it's Amazon. Awesome. And Chris, where can they see the uh, music video and any more of your engineering-based work? So the video is loaded onto my YouTube channel. It's the one video that looks like a music video, so <laughs> it's easy to find. Um, so it's youtube.com forward slash Christopher de Villiers. Um, I'll send you the name so you maybe can put it on screen if you want. Um, and all of the other vi video content, which is mostly regarding electronic repairs of electronic equipment, is also on my channel. So for the, the small part of your um, 
uh, of the of the people who's going to watch this who find that interesting maybe they can find something there <laughs> you never know you might spark somebody's interest in uh, electronics well thank you very much guys if there's anything else you'd like to add before we end off Oh, just we're super excited, you know, to watch the awards. It's going to be amazing. I think it should be a really good evening. We've put a lot into it. So hopefully it all goes. Yeah, through. and of course, thank you so much for having us. This was fun. No worries. Yes, this was definitely um, one of the first interviews that I've actually been in front of a camera, not behind it. So it's been fun. Good. I'm really glad to hear. Thank you very, very much, guys. Much appreciated.